met. There is a photograph with all of them standing together like a wall. And the Chinese Premier said that this is a very, very important organization for emerging countries and emerging economies. And I think we should take support from the fact that all the leaders of all the five nations are together. And in the same way, I think the vision of BRICS law ultimately ought to be a situation like you have ASEAN, you have SARC, you have the EU. The same way, if these five nations who constitute more than half the population of the world and more than half the economic strength, if they get together and have some kind of some kind of uh, a joining of nations and people without borders, having common laws in which it will be easy to have common dispute resolution mechanism. That is what is required and once we can match our laws to some extent, because unless you have that, the disputes will always go on because an act can be considered a breach of contract in one country and may not be considered a breach in another country. So if, if we can have some synchronization of our laws, it will lead to a great setup. Today, arbitrations are being conducted mostly in Singapore. You must have heard of SIAC or the London Court of Arbitration or the ICC in Paris. They take away a bulk of the arbitration. So an arbitration between India or China or between India and Russia or South Africa, etc. ultimately goes to ICC and goes to SIAC in Singapore. And those countries get the benefit of having an arbitration resolution while the, the countries or the firms which belong to two countries which have nothing to do with SIAC are unable to do in, in our own uh, common setup. Ultimately, I think that should be the goal. It may take some years to, to, to uh, reach that. I was reading that in Shanghai, at the second BRICS legal conference, an arbitration center has been set up. But I am not sure unless and until you have an arbitration clause to that effect that it will be resolved by the Shanghai center or any other center, you, you can't really go forward. That, I think, should be our goal. I leave these thoughts with you for discussions tomorrow and day after. I don't want to spend more time because Justice Mishra might pull me up in court that I am encroaching on his time. So, I would end and wish you all a good evening and a good cultural program and dinner to follow thereafter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rothgi. Your words ring very true. We in BRICS account for almost half the humanity on this earth. And all these legal organizations swear by the principle of rule of law. But that rule of law can become a true rule of law only when it is rooted in substantive equality. And that requires economic progress. And that is where BRICS countries have to come together to see to it that the engines of economic growth run in a manner that these countries which are very well endowed with natural resources and human resources are able to take their populations at the zenith of human achievement and eradicate poverty, eradicate want, and work together to see that we have a more democratic world economic order where essential medicines, environment, and all other factors serve the populations of the growth, globe 
rather than becoming a limiting factor only to subserve limited interests because we are living in a globe today we are one percent of the rich own almost the same wealth which rest of the 99 percent of the global population owns so with this i will now request starting with the host organization uh, the head of delegations to make a brief greeting and introduce themselves so i will first up of all call upon mr r k p shankar das president bar association of india Uh, Mr. Mr. Minister, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad, the Chief Guest, the Honourable Justice Deepak Mishra, each of the heads of delegation that have come from Brazil, Russia, China, and South Africa, it is my very pleasant duty to add, on behalf of the very large bar or very large number of lawyers in India. as president of the bar association of india to the welcome already extended to you by both uh, the uh, these earlier speakers and in particular our leader at the bar the attorney general of india uh, i have as i say as mr prashan uh, kumar said a brief but i must say a very pleasant duty to perform and before i i do that let me say that a very large number of lawyers in india have watched with great satisfaction the progress that has been made by the brics countries in evolving and beginning to implement the idea of brics as such uh, it's in the, it's amazing that the amount of diversity that there is as you know our legal system functions on on the basis of the the, the english system is particularly the the westminster model Uh, so uh, uh, for us it is really remarkable to see that with all the diversities of language culture and as well as in terms of economic exchanges and partnerships it is possible for a, a, a organization like the brics to begin to generate so much enthusiasm for joining the idea and and making it successful in particular we have had some in the bar association of india very hard working people three of whom you have already just heard and that is the attorney general himself mr venugopal and of course more than anybody else prashant kumar uh, it's uh, so i apart from welcoming all of you uh, the the other thing i want to be able to say is that we have followed with great interest and uh, uh, an excitement some of the uh, ideas that have been now incorporated in the both the brasilia declaration as well as the shanghai declaration and for us it is uh, rewarding it is uh, particularly uh, satisfying to see the enthusiasm of our own legal fraternity which includes with both Uh, the uh, not just the 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 minister uh, who hails from the legal fraternity at the supreme court and of course mr justice mishra also a judge of the supreme court as you will see uh, if you include the attorney general and mr venugopal we are, we have a very heavy and very remarkable presence of the supreme court fraternity Uh, here which is rare it's not really not always quite like that however for the success of uh, the brics organization and in particular in the area now of evolving the legal forum for us is particularly satisfying and it gives us a lot of hope of as i say indulging in the kind of uh, uh, international multi multi multiracialism of uh, different countries and becoming aware of and learning from them 
to be able to, for each of us, and learning from them to be able to improve the systems that we already have, because many of these ideas are new to us, and we haven't even scratched the surface as yet of discovering whatever there is that's available to us to learn. So I will simply end with one particular part of the Brasilia, the, the Shanghai Declaration, which has certainly attracted my interest more than many of the other quite remarkable and inspiring uh, uh, objectives. And this is the intention, and if I may read it, to further enhance the collective role of our countries in international affairs towards the development of a more just and fair uh, global economic and social order based on principles of equality and the rule of law. In pursuing this kind of an objective, or again on behalf of the Bar Association of India, we promise you full support and hopefully with the participation in the leadership of the BRICS Legal Forum, achieve some of these to the satisfaction of lawyers all over. Thank you very much. Now it is my pleasant duty to invite Mr. Chen Jiping, Executive Vice President of China Law Society, who is not just uh, heading the China Law Society, but I understand is a very strong figure in the Chinese ruling establishment. Please welcome Mr. Chen Jiping. Jinjin 我感到非常的高兴和良好的祝福金砖国家的合作制度金砖国家已经成为推动世界多计划成功的举办了两届的论坛金砖国家的法律院校联盟等协调的合作机制应该说是取得了非常丰硕的成果 
成果。金砖国家的领导人都出席了这次论坛。今年十月，第八次金砖国家领导人的会晤也将在印度举办。我们期待并相信，一个合作架构更加完善、合作举措更加务实、合作成果更加丰富的金砖国家合作机制，将进一步的推动世界的和平。稳定和繁荣。我们这一届的论坛，以为打造有效、包容、共同的解决方案、构建法律框架为主题，将围绕金砖国家金融与法律合作重点问题与关键领域、国际民商事法律新兴体系、构建金砖国家统一战略与合作机制的现实需要、国际仲裁与争议解决。构建金砖国家及新兴国家争议解决机制等一系列的问题，来展开卓有成效的讨论，非常必要，也非常有意义。我们中国法学会对这个论坛高度的重视，我个人有些想法讲一讲，供大家参考。我认为，首先要找准论坛的目标定位。我们印度的圣雄甘地说过：“找到你的目的地。”方法就会随之而来。我理解，金砖国家的法律论坛的目的，一个呢是为了加强金砖国家之间的法律制度和法治状况的相互的交流，增进法治共识和法治互信，促进合作机制的建设。第二呢，它是为了金砖国家领导人会晤所达成的协议、所采取的举措的落实。提供有效的法律框架和制度方案。第三呢，是为了促进金砖国家之间不同法律制度的学习和借鉴，加强法律合作，推进本国的法治发展。第四呢，是为了金砖国家合作机制提升在参与全球经济金融治理、应对经济危机和气候变化、反对恐怖主义、维护公平正义。等国际事务中的话语权和影响力，提供法律支持。论坛主题和议题的设置，论坛发言人的邀请，论坛成果的形式和内容，论坛的具体举措，论坛的宣传等等，都要按照论坛的上述目标进行精心的设计。本届论坛紧紧围绕第八次金砖国家领导人峰会。的主题，也就是打造有效的、包容、共同的解决方案，把主题确定为“为打造有效、包容、共同的解决方案构建法律框架”，而且把论坛的举办时间安排在领导人峰会之前召开，确保论坛直接服务于金砖国家的合作机制。我认为这是非常明智的，也是非常务实的做法，一定会得到。各个金砖国家决策层的高度的认可和支持。第二呢，我觉得应该要坚持问题导向和成果的导向。论坛的主题和具体议题的设置要有强烈的问题意识和问题导向。每一届论坛的主题都应当属于金砖国家共同关心、共同面临的问题，属于需要集中智慧、联合攻关、凝聚共识的问题，也是迫于。也是属于迫切需要解决的问题，所以一方面我们要建立金砖国家法律论坛与金砖国家领导人峰会的衔接的机制，尽早的确定论坛和主题和具体的议题，尽早的组织相关的国家的专家学者开展研究，并确定专题发言人。另一方面，也要加强对金砖。国家合作机制如何参与全球的治理，建立国际经济政治新秩序等方面，设置前瞻性、基础性的一些课题，作为论坛的主题，当好金砖国家合作机制的核心的法治智库。论坛举办的直接目的在于成果的产出，没有真金白银的成果产出，论坛就没有什么实际价值，也不可能持续。因此，每一届金砖国家的法律论坛结束之后，除了形成宣言之外，还可以对会上每一位专家发表的真知灼见进行梳理，提供给金砖合作机制
或相关国家决策机构作为参考。论坛成果及转化的形式可以更加多元，加大对论坛的宣传，尤其是对论坛共识、专家建议的宣传报道，也是扩大论坛成果影响的一个重要的途径。第三。要由点到面，广泛参与。金砖国家法律论坛首先是一个论坛，同时又是一个合作机制。两年以来，在金砖国家法律论坛的框架下，陆续设立了一系列工作机构。本届论坛还要讨论设立专业委员会，这就实现了金砖国家法律论坛由点到面的发展过程，影响和成效也将会逐步的扩大。在这样的基础上，我建议啊，要在更多的法学院开办金砖国家法律的专门研究机构，开设讲授金砖国家。